what is up everybody bill thomas dope and permaculture hop farm and i am on the farm in a spot that i haven't shown you guys very much of because i don't do much with it every once in a while i cut it when it's not flooded which is most of the time that it's flooded but i have got a new project underway can you guys tell what's behind me and my hardcore permaculture people back there give you a couple of hints the aztecs used to use it and it, in recorded history, it is the best way, the most efficient way to grow food. I'll let you know in just a second. Say real quick, thank you guys for subscribing and liking my videos. I'm up to 73 subscribers. I'm almost at the 100 mark. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like. I would really appreciate so it. So in this thank back field, that's just always marshy, always wet. I didn't think I'd be able to do anything with it back here. I just thought, you know, maybe a couple of times a year I could get back here with a mower and mow it without getting stuck, and that'll be about it. But I was racking my brain. I was like, "There's something I, there's something I got to, I, I got to be able to do something back here with this land." So I was on YouTube, you know, going through some videos, and I came across uh, Jeff Lawton's permaculture number 15 video when he's talking about wetlands. And he said a word that really intrigued me and then explained that word, which was chimpanada. A word from the ancient Aztecs. And it's the way they grew food in their grand city. They had over a million people in the city and they grew food and fed everybody inside this city. So this is my attempt at building a chimpanada. In North Carolina see up here as you can see water flows down this and I have tapped into it here and I'm digging a trench all the way around and the soil that I'm pulling out of the trench I'm throwing in the middle Now it said that chimpanadas can have up to seven harvests in a year. Of course this was in Mexico, well modern day Mexico, right around Mexico City. So their climate's a lot different than I have here in North Carolina. Their growing season's longer, so I don't believe I'd be able to get seven out of it because of our winter. But I'm gonna try. This is just, I just started this. this is day one really of digging the trenches trying to figure out the water level so the idea here is to dig out all the soil throw it in the middle so the water can run all the way around and not in this bed here this bed's going to be raised now because of the soil pulling out and putting it back in now, some, some people might say, well, typical chimpanadas are floating islands that you grow on. Eh, yeah, mostly right. A lot of the research I've done, that's how a lot of people do them, is they have floating islands, and they grow on those floating islands. But I've also seen people do it in this way. Now, we have been getting a lot of, a lot of rain lately, so there's water all in this. As the water goes down, I'm gonna be taking more dirt out, more mud out, and then throwing it back into the middle here. So my goal for this is to have water in this year round, which shouldn't be a problem. We have really low land, we've got springs up the hill, and right in that brush over there, there's a creek that runs all the way back into the woods and then down to the big creek back there. So we are really close to the water table. So as this dries up, I'll be taking this out and I'll be putting it onto the bed. 
Now, eventually, if I can get this to hold water all year round and not completely freeze during our winter, I may be able to put fish around this. Then typical chimpanadas, when they're ready to plant, say this is this uh, garden bed here, this chimpanada bed is established and, they're, and we're growing in it. Well, one of the ways they get fertility is they come over to the creek or to the, the dugout canal and they take the soil out of the bottom of the canal and then they put it up on here. They take all the good stuff in the bottom that's been all the decomposed matter that's in the bottom of the water and they put it up and that's what they use to feed their plants. So my goal for this trench is to get it about three feet wide and about three feet deep. I think that's going to be enough to be able to hold the water. We'll see. If it's not, then I'll keep going deeper until it does hold water. So we'll trace this back a little bit. Like I said, it comes, we got this natural swale all the way up the property, which runs down. And then we'll drop into this empanada channel. Or chimpanada, I said empanada like it's a food. <laughs> and the water comes around. Comes around. Each one of these corners I've dug out as deep as I could to get a nice little pool in the corner. Same with this corner. And then it's got a little overflow channel. So when it's completely full, it can overflow into the creek down there. And then run off into the woods down to the creek down there. So, Here's the beginnings. If it does work, all I really have to do to build another one is the same thing. I'll tap into this channel, this canal that's already right here. Dig out another line. Square it off. Connect it to this one. And then we'll have another chimpanada bed that we're standing in right now. Now, in typical chimpanada beds, as the Aztecs made them, they would be pulling the mud, the soil, out of the rivers or the canals and throwing it up on top. And then they're layering it with organic matter. The reeds, the grasses that are in the water, they're throwing it up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect straw, hay, and leaves, and I'm going to throw it up there. Act as the same thing. That'll be the next step after I, I've got my basic shape built. So now I'm going to be throwing some organic matter on top. And after that organic matter, I'll be throwing more soil. Almost like a lasagna garden. And layering more soil on top of the organic matter. And the Aztecs kept doing that until they built themselves a little island inside of a lake. It's crazy, the Aztecs started off on a little island inside of a lake and made a humongous city by doing this technique, by taking sticks initially, shoving them down in the mud in their, in their lake, and then taking the lake mud, putting them inside of the sticks, putting rocks inside of the sticks and grasses and all kinds of organic matter until they built themselves a little island inside the lake and then they went on to the next spot and that's how they were able to feed over a million people in one city which we can't do that nowadays in 2018 almost 2019 a city of a million people has to rely on farmers with thousands of acres to feed them So I really struggled trying to find information on chimpanadas online. Um, so if you guys have any information on chimpanadas, 
anywhere you can direct me to read more about Chimpanadas or watch videos about Chimpanadas or anything like that, please, down in the description, drop those links for me so I can learn more. I've been shoving my everything in my brain as much as possible the past week about Chimpanadas, but there's not very much out there. Uh, a lot of it is in different languages or, or in Spanish. So some of it I can't even read or understand what they're saying because they're speaking a different language. So if you guys have any tips, tricks, I know ABC Acres, um, they have a couple Chimpanadas in their wetlands. They're way up north in north in, uh, in USA, United States. I'm in North Carolina. Their, their zone, I believe, is like four or five. I'm in zone seven, so I've got a lot longer growing season, so hopefully I can get my chimpanadas right. So if you guys have any tips or tricks on chimpanadas, please let me know. Drop a link down in the, in the description for, or down in the um, comments for me. Let me know um, where I can go to maybe do, do some more reading on, on things like this.